Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decisions. And uh, today is uh, August 5th. And, uh, you know, my finances are updated for the month. Uh, I've been looking at them. And, uh, you know, I have an idea for a new dashboard, something I really want to see every month uh, a net worth change dashboard. You know, net worth really is the bottom line to personal finance. And uh, your net worth change is just uh, how much your net worth increases or decreases in a month. And that's really the most important factor of what you want to control in a month. You want to grow your net worth. And uh, I just want to make a visual that, uh, you know, lays that out for me very clearly. I, I, I don't think I really have some, such a thing so far. Um, you know, I have... Uh, a you know a design on this sheet just showing the the high level kpis um you know like have a first tier of kpis that break down net worth and all of its uh components which are uh number one cash flow that's your your take home pay minus your spent and then um 401k input that's uh how much I put in and how much my company matches every month. Uh, number three is investment interest. So uh, not including any money that gets added into the month, but uh, the amount increase uh, in the account just by interest alone, whether it be an increase or a decrease, your investment interest. Number four is just the house equity change. So. Uh, you know, my house uh, does go up in value every month, and I go on Zillow at the first of every month just to see um, how much the house value has increased um, in the given month. And I've been doing that ever since I bought the house. And uh, it's been important to really keep track of that. I really got to make sure I do that every month, the first of every month, because uh, my house value is actually a lot more than what Zillow says, uh, a good 10, 12 grand more. So, um, you know, I did get an appraisal and the house was of much higher value than what I bought it for, about $20,000 more, which is awesome. I came out with a lot of equity and, um, you know, that that's that's grown a good amount this this year and that's uh what most of my net worth increase is attributed by is my house equity um you know i pay a substantial mortgage about 2900 and uh most of that more most of that is just towards interest only about 300 of it is actually going towards the principal um but it's at a, like a 6% interest rate. And then lastly is my truck equity change, which is very small, only like $100 a month. Right now, I have about negative $8,000 equity. Um, you know, I bought my car well over its uh, MSRP. I mean, that's usually how it goes. I wanted it to be an easy process. I went with Carvana. Um, I didn't really get a good interest rate, um, and I'm looking towards refinancing that. I probably should do that after this video. Uh, I was looking at it uh, last night. I could, you know, I have a credit score right now of 781. So uh, back then, when I got that car, it was only at like 700. So um, I could uh, get a better loan. So I'll do that. But that's really the, you know. The five pieces of of net worth change cash flow 401k input investment interest house equity change and truck equity change and then i want to see it in another form of uh, metrics you know just by accounts you know the other way to add up net worth is just to sum up the balances of all your accounts and that's what i do the first of every month i always just log in all the account balances get that net worth and let that be stuck. And, um, you know, 
breaking down net worth by accounts, you can just buy the cash account change. You know, the the difference between all the cash accounts this month versus last month, that change, that's gonna that's all I want to see. And then for savings, then for credit cards, then for retirement, and then uh, it'll be redundant, but for house equity change and then truck equity change. Uh, you know, and to the left of both grids, I want to show the net worth change. And it's going to be cool because it's two different ways to look at it, but they're going to be the same. I also uh, want to make a, um, a new table um, in BigQuery, and I'm just started to work on that now. Uh, start building it out uh, while recording. Um, just something that, uh, you know, three main columns, a columnar table um, segmented by, um, I think, uh, account. Um, we'll see. I think I'll add even more than that. I, I really want to add all the ingredients to um, cash flow into this, but in a columnar way, but uh, three three metrics, key metrics. Um, the balance uh, last month, the balance this month, and then the move to, the, the send to, the difference between those two, how much money was moved into it. Um, might even add a fourth one just for investment interest. Add that in its own field, just to have an easy way to build this dashboard. But I, I do plan on using like all tons of tables. Um, but let me share my screen and we'll go into BigQuery. All right, here's BigQuery. So yeah, I'm trying to build a, 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 a columnar table. So let me um, show you what the ingredient table is. It's right here. And uh, this is what I'm gonna build this table off of. But um, you know, right now I got balance this month. I wanna get balance last month and I wanna get the send to category for Huntington. So that's one. Um, let me get the uh, last month. So I'm going to left join the same table to it as B on A dot months ago. That's what we use. Where A dot months ago equals B dot months ago plus one. It could be the other way. We'll check. And then we also have to do and uh, metric name. Metric. Do metric number. Uh, yeah, metric number. A dot metric number equals B dot metric number. Okay. And uh, let's add balance last month. Uh, case when uh, B dot metric name equals that. And B dot. And that change that to last month. And then I also have a send to. So where's the send to Huntington? Send to right here. So um, I want to plug this in the middle. Uh, send to Huntington checking and metric value. Else no, and that's going to be send to amount. All right. So here's one piece of the table. And uh, we just need to group by, group by one, two, three. And uh, we'll order. And we're going to run this. Let's try minus one. That is right. Great. All right. So that's just one piece, and now we need to do it for um, all the other accounts. Account balance, Huntington savings, and the send to Huntington savings. That's that. Let's run that. I want to add null as interest uh, interest amount interest amount. All right, account balance, Chase checking. Welcome back. Um, you know, I, I wrote uh, quite a bit of code just now um, in order to get to this table that I have right here, which really showcases uh, four columns that I wanted to capture, the balance last month, the send to amount, the balance this month, and the interest amount. So the four components that really uh, I wanted to capture, and it was like a lot of... Uh, it took a lot of work to get there you know it, it started with um this query that you see it's very a bit very big query where um you know i'm finding distinct values in the table and, and just capturing that alone and 
bringing it to a common uh, schema. And uh, so I do that for every single account. And that's quite a bit of code. And um, so, yeah, that's all that. And then I just uh, find the totals right here. I stack that to the table. I put in the numeric values. I used Excel to write that. I did some generalized uh, rounding and coalesce to all the metrics. And then I added a statement where if it's zero across the board, don't even have it as a row, get rid of it. Um, and then I do add a, a final net worth uh, summary, add that to the table, and then get to the final table. So let's bring it into Power BI. So let's find it. I just went to recent sources right here, net worth change. OK. Import. All right, there we are. We don't want to do anything to it. All right, we got to wait for it to load. All right, let's go find that table, net worth change. We want account group to be accorded, sorted by account group number. Same for account, account number. And then we got to add dollars to these. All right, let's go to the diagram, data model. All right, let's find this new table that got added. Uh, net worth change. What is it connected to? The month table. Great. Put it right here. All right, great. So let's add a new dashboard now. Net worth change. And let's adjust the page. All right. Let's go get a title. First things first, let's just show that table. Let's go to net worth change, and we just want to add account group, account name, account balance last month, account balance this month, then to amount. All right. There we go. Two matrix. And months ago, zero. And we blow this up. All right. Let's add some conditional formatting. All right. Hello, welcome back. I made a finished making a dashboard that uh, hones in on net worth change, and uh, this is just something that I'd love to see uh, after I update my finances every month, um, just to see um, some new KPIs that I've kind of brought into the environment, and I'll explain them that uh, are really good, such as uh, the loan interest paid in a given month. I mean. Almost three thousand dollars. This is from the house and from the car. The interest on those loans. This is just how much I'm paying in interest alone, and that's a lot. Um, and uh, you know, only a small portion of that three thousand um, is going towards the principal. Only seven hundred. So, you know, in total. You know, the sum of these two make up, you know, just the total amount that I paid uh, towards my house and towards my car, which is, um, you know, about 3500 uh, well, Unfortunately, only a small portion goes to the principal. That's especially the case with uh, my house mortgage, um, you know, 30-year loan. And I, it's, I'm only on year two, so... Um, most of the money I pay towards my mortgage is just paying off interest, sadly. Um, you know, property value change. So for my car and for my um, house, what was the change in that value? So these are three new KPIs that, uh, I, you know, I, I brought brought to life. Um, the, the top KPIs, um, you know, uh, Starting with cash flow, these five ingredients really, not technically, but um, the way I see it, add up to my net worth change in a month. So, you know, you can break my net worth change down into five pieces, the ways of which I make money. Number one, most important, is through cash flow. So, in July, 
I was negative 878 cash flow. Um, you know, a huge factor is my house equity change. So that went up quite substantially. Uh, investment interest, there was good good on the stock market. So this is all my investments, so retirement um, and, uh, and my savings were investments. And then uh, this is a net 401k input. So uh, all the money that I put towards uh, pre, pre-tax retirement. And then the truck equity change, which is very small. So these five ingredients really make up net worth change. It's not technically, uh, but that's the way I see it. And then down the second tier is um, by account type. So cash, savings, credit card, retirement. The other two are house and truck equity change. Uh, I didn't want to show those twice. So instead I went with uh, showed the net worth this month versus and then last month. So a net worth increased by 3,189. And that's what it is before and after. Um, I got how much I paid in credit card payments. That's something I really want to know. Uh, retirement interest. So just looking at retirement interest. Not just um, this is investment interest is all accounts. This is just retirement and retirement input. This is very negative because I did cash out some Roth uh, to pay for a roof, which is bad, but I had to do it. Um, so what's nice is um, you know you can switch between looking at the current month or looking at what the time filters tell you. Um, so. You know, I got two different date filters, um, and you just want to use either or. So right now, month date is turned off, and I'm just working with months ago. And uh, now that I'm looking at the date filters view, the, all these KPIs are based on this time frame. So if time frame of from uh, July of 2022 to July of 2024, and this shows the overall of you know, that time frame, and that's nice. So, you know, everything is additive where it's not additive net worth and net worth last month. Those just are the same, just honing in on the current month, but all these are additive. So, you know, looking at it, you know, for two years, my net worth hasn't changed much only by 3,381 and my cash flow has been way negative. My house equity has really been saving me. Um, the stock market's been good. I've made a lot in interest, investment interest, twenty-two thousand. Um, I've put in a lot towards four hundred one k. I bought a truck, and that put me negative. Looking at the loan interest amount, I paid this much in loan interest, thirty thousand. Only five thousand seven hundred in principal. My property has gone up by 20 grand. Um, and then this this table right here really just focuses on the um, shows the balance of every account last month versus this month, and then the difference, and then the um, this you know how much sent to, how much money was kind of sent to the account, transferred into it. Interest amount, if it's an investment account, how how much interest is being made off it. Um, So, yeah, this is a really nice table showing every every account uh, that I have segmented by a group. And um, I got these spark lines showing um, the the metrics over time by the by the filters controlled by the filters just to give an overall view and that's really nice. And then down below I'm showing the account balance by segmented by um, account group. So both assets and liabilities. And then this is just uh, the account balance in a line chart showing exactly what it is because this chart doesn't really give you that figure. But this is uh, 
my net worth by month, basically, right here. In other words, account balances, total net account balances. Uh, this is the account balance difference, the change, net worth change by month. Um, interest amount by month. And uh, send to what was sent to. Most of it's, you know, send to credit cards. And then I show all the metrics just by the time frame. So here's my net worth change over 24 months. Here's cash flow. It's been really negative um, for a long time. It's got to be fixed. Here's my house equity change. Right when I bought the house, I gained an incredible amount of equity because I the, the value of the house was way more than when I bought it. But all in all, it makes a good amount of equity for me every month, about two grand. Uh, my total investment interest by month. Uh, my 401k input. Uh, the truck equity change. I just bought a truck in May. As soon as I bought it, negative 8000 in equity because I paid way more than what the truck was worth. And every month I just gain only like a hundred bucks in equity. It's a depreciating asset. So the, how, the, the truck value goes down every month. Uh, here's the cash change by month, the savings change by month. This, this is when I took out all my savings to buy my house, 34000 My credit card change, I've really been good about paying off credit cards lately. My retirement change, uh, loan interest paid. So, you know, it's pretty constant how much I paid. And when I bought a house or the truck, even more loan interest is being paid. The loan principal being paid. So with the house, it's only $346 of principal each month. And it's about the same for truck. My property value change, that helps me quite a lot with my net worth. It goes up most months, as you can see, with the house. Credit card payments by month. So how much I'm paying towards my credit cards. Lately, it's been a lot. Getting it down. Retirement interest by month. How much money am I making off of my retirement? And my input. Lately, I've cashed out on my, four, on my Roth, which is bad. And that's why it's negative. So anyway, yeah, this is this new dashboard I built really helping me after a month just to see some really nice high-level KPIs, as you can see in the current month view. You know, building it in BigQuery, um, you know, it's a, it's a new table structure that I built. Um, you know, combining the balance information and the send to amount and the interest amount, uh, building that in a historical table, a columnar table, um, semi additive. It does have summary statistics in it, too. I just felt like adding that. But, um, you know, it took, it took a while to build this table. You know, it all starts with this very long query right here that uh, just defines every row in a given uh, month. Um, and I'm using this big columnar table and just grabbing certain attribute values and just honing in on that. And, uh, you know, it's different for send to and for balance. So it's nice. I'm finally bringing those two metrics together along with the investment interest and the balance diff in a table. So it was, you know, building a columnar table, just defining every single row in the columnar table. So this is like the chase checking row and defining what the fields are. It's, you know, some don't have interest on it, you know, checking accounts. I never pay interest on credit cards, but um, some of them do have interest, and that would be like, you know, Robinhood 
or yeah, it gets defined right here. Interest amount. So some queries are different than the others, but you know each one is the same schema. And then uh, I just took out some of the bad calculations, the really high ones that are were throwing off values, and because they didn't make sense. Um, then I calculate the totals, stack those two together. I then define the new the sort orders of every uh, dimension field in the table, add uh, rounding and coalescing, turning everything to zero if it's missing for every metric. Finally, adding just the total net worth row, stacking that, and then I got the final table. That and it looks like this. So this is really great for data visualization. You know, for this table, for this chart, most of the information is coming from that table. Some of it, like cash flow, is not in there. It's just coming from the monthly finances table. So that's all fine. Um, I'm able to blend fact tables together just because they're all rooted off the same DIM tables. Um, so yeah, I really like this dashboard. Really good for. Um, you know, once the month is over to see some high level KPIs on the current month, just like you see here. And I got it added to the front page down right here. It's easy to get to it. So there you go. I hope you like this uh, video and uh, stay tuned for more. Have a good one.